So um, I'm married now, but when I was single, I was on the dating apps a lot because the girls got to eat, right? <laughs> <laughs> But this particular time, I wasn't just looking for love. I was also looking for a job. <laughs> I wanted to work in finance, and uh, I found this guy on the app, and he said he owned his own hedge fund. So I swiped right, and we matched. And so he, we talked a bit, and he set up a date to bring me out to a restaurant, Omakase restaurant, for dinner. And if you don't know what Omakase is, you probably can't afford it. <laughs> So, we're having dinner, it's a nice time, we're getting to know each other, and after dinner is over, he stands up and goes to the bathroom. And when he comes back, I ask him, hey, what's in your backpack on the back of your chair? And he was like, why? Did you look in it? And I was like, no, I didn't, I'm just asking what's in your backpack that you brought on a date. And he was like, well, did you look in it? Because I told you, I hate liars. If you look in it, I don't care. And I was like, no, I didn't look in it. And he was like, I was standing right there and I saw you look in it. Don't lie to me. <laughs> and uh, at this point, I think, I was like, did I look in his backpack? <laughs> <laughs> did my soul leave my body and just look in? Um, so naturally, when he asked me to go back to his apartment, I said yes. <laughs> because I hadn't gotten a job yet. <laughs> yeah, so when I got to his apartment, I instinctively stood by the front door, and I noticed that I needed to charge my phone. And I asked him if I could charge it, and he said, yeah, but uh, I only have one wall socket. It's uh, in here, in my bedroom. <laughs> and this guy who owns his own hedge fund has one wall socket in his entire Manhattan apartment. I'm thinking if before the date he was going around covering up all the wall sockets <laughs> in his apartment just in case she needs to charge her phone. Um, so I was like, no, I'm not comfortable with that. Thank you. I'm going to wait right here. And then he gets angry at me and he's like, why? Do you think I'm going to kiss you or something tonight? And I'm like, no, him kissing me is like the least of my worries right now. So. Um, he realized that didn't work, and so he decided to try a different tactic. And he said, hey, have you ever felt a tempur bed before? <laughs> and I was like, I'm good. I've felt beds before. I don't camp. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I realized that omakase might be my last meal. <laughs> and I went to the bathroom to kind of gather my thoughts. And in the bathroom, on the, the bathroom sink, there was a Prada purse, which I'm sure belonged to the woman that he murdered before me. <laughs> so I got out of there, and I was like, okay, I ought to make a run for it. So I ran out of his front door, and I'm frantically pressing his elevator button, the elevator button. And he, I could still hear him talking in his apartment because he hadn't realized that I had left yet. <laughs> and I think I imagined him trying to sell his tempur mattress, like, it's clouds on the floor. Try it. Um, so, the elevator... <laughs> so the elevator wasn't coming fast enough. And so I decided to run down the stairwell. And when I was in the stairwell, I heard this front door open and close shut because I guess he couldn't find me. I made it out there that night. And I eventually worked in finance for six years after that. And it still wasn't my worst experience yet. It wasn't a great experience, but it wasn't the worst. And uh, my greatest regret from that night is not taking that Prada purse, because that woman didn't need it anymore. <laughs> um, that